What's up, Dirt Junkies? I am a cheap backpacker. But being cheap doesn't mean you have to settle for bad gear. One of the most important pieces of gear once you're in the backcountry is your stove. But just because it's important does not mean it has to be expensive. These are two budget backpacking stoves that I have owned for quite some time. I have a lot of experience with both of these stoves. Both are under $20. In this video, I'm going to tell you about both of these stoves and compare them head to head for everything from weight, functionality, ease of use, how fast they boil a cup of water, as well as their efficiency and fuel use. The best stove might not be the same for everybody, but hopefully this video helps you decide on a great stove that's less than $20. And as I was preparing for this video, I was at Walmart looking at the camping gear as I often do and saw another great budget backpacking stove option. I picked this stove up from Ozark Trail for $13. It looks very similar to this one, but we'll get into that a little bit later. Nice to know that you've got three options, Amazon and Walmart, for picking up a budget backpacking stove. And it's getting a little warm in here. Let's pop a do. Mm. Now let's get into it. First, I'll give you a quick run around each of the stoves, and then we'll start comparing them head to head in different categories. First up, the BRS stove. It comes with this little carry bag, and then that's the stove. Super tiny, super light, and works really well. You set these arms up like this, there's three of them, and that sits right on top of your canister. There you go. So that is the BRS 3000. You can get it on Amazon, usually for around $17. It seems to fluctuate between 15 and 20. Next up is the AOTU backpacking stove. This one is on Amazon right now for about $16. It comes with this little orange plastic case. The arms are all pushed together to this side. You spread them out just like this. Then you flip these out to give your pot a little bit more st stability. Definitely a little bit bigger than the BRS. It does have four arms and it actually has a piezo ignition lighter. So that's one feature that this stove has that the BRS does not. The Walmart stove still has the tag on it. It looks really similar to this one. Has the same functionality where the four arms are pushed together. You spread them out and then flip these out to give your pot more stability does have its own ignition right there. I will tell you, these look almost identical, but we'll still compare them anyway. So there you go. There's the BRS, the Ozark Trail, and the AOTU budget backpacking stoves. All right, let's start comparing these head to head. Now, the first thing we wanna talk about, because before you even use your stove in the backcountry, you have to get it there. So let's talk about how well each of these will pack up. And to help with that, I've got three different pots here. This is a 750 milliliter Tokes titanium pot. This one is very similar. It's just from a budget brand. And this is about a 600 milliliter pot. So let's see how well everything packs up in each of these pots. I like to put my fuel canister in the pot. That was loud. I like to put my stove in the pot. First, we'll do the BRS. Put that in a little carry bag. And that's gonna fit really nice into that pot. Lots of extra room in there which is good because this one does not have a lighter. So I need to also put a lighter in there. Still tons of room. Let's talk about the AOTU stove. Put it in the plastic carry case. Put the cap on. It will fit in the pot, but you cannot quite put the lid on. But I found that if I take it out of the plastic carry case, it will fit in there. You can see there's even still a little bit of room for a lighter, definitely a little tighter than the BRS stove. That's definitely gonna scratch your pot up. And so I will wrap it in a buff or a bandana. You can see that that's all contained in there. I really need a rubber band or something to keep the lid on. So you can get the AOTU stove into a 750 milliliter pot, but you can't use the plastic carry case. Given the fact that it's a $16 stove, I don't necessarily trust that ignition. I like to take a lighter anyway, and it just makes sense to put it in here with my pot. And as you can imagine, this one is going to fit basically the same as this one. You can see that it fits in there with a lighter just fine but we are definitely gonna to wanna to wrap it so it doesn't scratch our pot. So once again, we've got it all in there. It's really tight, but you can make it work. Now with a slightly smaller pot, as you can guess, it's gonna be a little bit of a different story. Here's the 600 milliliter pot. The BRS stove fits in there just fine with a lighter. You can get the BRS in a smaller pot, with a lighter, no problem. The AOTU and the Ozark Trail 
there's just no way. If you have a 750 milliliter pop, any of these stoves will fit in. You won't be able to use the plastic carry case or this pouch from Ozark Trail, but you can get it all into the pop with a lighter. Now that you've got it packed up, you have to carry it on your back. Let's talk about how much each of these backpacking stoves weighs. First up, BRS. If we were to weigh just the stove, that comes in super light at 27 grams. Now, I always take it in this little carry pouch. It's pretty small and should have mentioned earlier, it does come with an extra O-ring. 30 grams for the stove in the bag with the extra O-ring, really light. Next up is the AOTU stove. That comes in at 95 grams. If you're going to be carrying it in the plastic case, you'll be at 112 grams. So that's the AOTU stove. I'm guessing this one's gonna be exactly the same. 95 grams for the Ozark Trail. But we know a stove is much more than how it packs up and how much it weighs. So let's talk about how easy each of these stoves are to use. And we're gonna put each of these on a canister so you can see how they work. As far as setting this one up, it's pretty easy. I found that you have to kind of put all three arms up most of the way before you push them down. Otherwise they get in each other's ways and screw it on. Let's set this one up. And you have to spread these out, then push these arms down. For whatever reason, this arm never wants to go all the way down. Kind of annoying. Now let's do the Ozark Trail. This one is basically the same as the AOTU. Maybe exactly the same. Spread out these four arms, and those all seem to be nice and level. Show you a close up here. That's the, oh yep, that's the Ozark Trail one. I put the pot on there. You can see it's just, it's a little bit teetery. Here's the AOTU. This is that one that's a little bit wonky. You can see it just really, this one really teeters because of that. And then here's the BRS, only three arms. So smaller wingspan, but it's a lot more stable. Let's talk about lighting each of them. As I said earlier, the BRS does not have a built-in ignition, so I always have to bring a lighter if I want to light my stove. That's how you light it. Very safe indoors. <laughs> Next, we'll talk about the AOTU built-in ignition. I was on a trip last summer where the ignition was not working, so I was very glad that I had still taken a lighter with me. The Ozark Trail is gonna be the same, but for completeness, we'll just light it anyway. So right now the ignitions are working on both of these, but I take a lighter anyway. The other thing that's important with the stove, when I'm using a stove, I only boil water. I use it for dehydrated meals, I use it for hot chocolate, and that's basically it. I'm not necessarily concerned about my stove being able to handle a low, medium, high heat. I just want high heat all the time, boil that water as fast as I can. But I'm gonna show you how well you can get low, medium, high on each of these stoves in case that matters to you. First BRS. So you can see it's definitely got a high, but you can also turn it down pretty low. Not bad. That's all the way open. Maybe a little bit there. Yeah, so you can get some low, medium, high there as well. This one will probably be the same. Yeah, you can get some low heat. So it looks like there is a little bit of variability in the heat the output you can get in each of the stoves. The other thing I'm interested in is how well these can do in the wind. That is a big setback for a lot of budget backpacking stoves. I've actually got my backpacking pump here and we're gonna see how well these stoves do with the pump blowing directly on them. All right, let's light it up. Yeah, so it seems like the wind is really making that stove not functional at all. I can feel the heat way over here, but can't feel any heat right here on my hand. Let's try this one. Woo! Yeah, I can't feel any heat there. Woo, it's all over there. So if the wind's coming from underneath, <laughs> that's okay. We're not gonna do the Ozark Trail or I'm afraid that I'm gonna set off some kind of alarm but it's gonna be basically the same. None of these seem to do great in the wind. 
not a big concern for me and I don't think that there's one that necessarily does any better than the other. Now let's finally get to the head-to-head -head comparison of how long they take to boil a cup of water and how efficient they are in doing that. I actually put some water in the fridge a couple days ago so it was all the same temperature nice and cold because we all know that the water that we get in the backcountry is not 70 degree room temperature water. Because we want to see how efficient each of the stoves are we're going to weigh each of the canisters before we boil the cup of water and then weigh it after to see how much fuel was used in boiling that cup of water. So we're going to do this at least twice so that each stove has both a titanium pot as well as a steel pot since that can affect the boil times as well. Here's the water that was in the fridge. There's one cup, there's one cup, and there's one cup. All right, let's weigh each of these. And if you're finding this video helpful, I would really appreciate a like below. Hit that like button, leave me a comment, and let's keep going. Here we go. The BRS was definitely first. This one's now done. This is the Ozark Trail. Um, it was the longest, but you remember this fuel canister was pretty light, so pretty empty. That could be part of it, so that's why we're going to swap the canisters around. And the AOTU was in second place. So there you go. Now let's weigh each of the canisters, see how much fuel we used. All right, so we boiled a lot of water, but what did we learn? Basically, it looks like the times for boiling a cup of water are the same for each of the stoves. It's between a minute and a half to two minutes. The big variability really seemed to be between how full the canister was, as well as the material that your pot is made out of. This is a stainless steel pot, and they were all much slower on this when compared to the titanium pots. So there's the boil test. And as far as efficiency, they all seem to use between five and eight grams of fuel to boil a cup of water. With all of that said, which is my preferred stove to take on my backpacking trips? For me, it comes down to weight and packability, especially since the boil times and the efficiency seem to be basically the same across the board. As we talked about on both the AOTU and the Ozark Trail, you've got these little arms that can mess up and make your pot surface less stable. For me, it's the BRS 3000. And once you pick the right backpacking stove, you really want to think about what kind of food you want to take on your backpacking trip. I have a great video, I'll put a link to that right here, that will show you a typical menu for a three-day, two-night backpacking trip and how I saved over a pound of weight on that menu without spending hardly any more money. Enjoy that video, and remember, life is better with some dirt in it.